After yet another MP, Mike Freer steps down, fearing his safety. I can finally say that I agree with something that Angela Rayner is saying. She said, I think what people need to understand is that you can disagree with a member of parliament, whichever political party they are. Well, I couldn't agree more. She went on to say that constant threats and abuse and the fact that we've had two of our colleagues murdered in the last couple of years does weigh on our minds. Well, of course, she's talking about the murders of Joe Cox and Sir David Amos. I remember his death. I had just done a slot on Jeremy Vine in the morning when Gary Lineker decided to call me vile on social media to his 8.2 million followers at the time, instigating a pylon of hate. He knew the effect it would have. He, how could he not? I got the usual stuff alongside a load of death threats. I complained to the BBC, but nothing happened. That's the problem these days. We've got a generation of people who believe that they hold the moral high ground, so any manner of behaviour goes. Take the pro-Palestine protesters. They believe that they are right, and many are chanting from the river to the sea, which pretty much any Jewish person I've ever met has found deeply offensive. Others on these marches haven't got a clue what they're talking about. In the dictionary, Zionism is the belief that Jews should have a homeland. That's what I, it says. I, I think that's so, fair. I think that's fair. But Palestine wasn't empty. Palestine had people in it. And you can't just take over a land where people are, are living and say, now it's, we plant a flag and now it's ours. You can't do that. But the United Nations gave the land to Israel in '48, and, and the Balfour Declaration was wrong. And I think, and I disagree that um, it's fair in any way, shape or form. And also, it's an ethno-state. They're trying to, Israel is trying to create a state where there are only Jewish people. Where else in the world do you have that? Um, but there are two million Israeli Arabs that have the same rights as Israeli Jews living in Israel. They have the same rights. Yeah, uh, two million is 20% of the population are Arab Muslim. Right, OK. Well, why are they, tra why are they trapping people in Gaza and the West Bank then? Um, because they feel like in Gaza it's a response to the Hamas October 7th attacks and they f I, I think they feel like they need to dismantle Hamas. Hamas was set up by Israel. Hamas was set up by Israel. Who helped to, to set up Hamas. When? Sorry. Finance Hamas? I thought it was the Iranians that were financing Hamas. Oh, that's propaganda. Are you Jewish? No. I mean, it doesn't matter. No, I just wondered, but are you a Zionist? I know, it doesn't matter. It does matter to me if you're a Zionist. Why does it matter? Because I want to know what your agenda is. Why, why do you need to know? I'm, I'm just here interviewing people. You don't need to know what... But I do want to know what your agenda is. You don't need to know, though. Well, I don't need to speak to you anymore, then. Okay. <laughs> The debates these days are so polarised that they almost encourage extremism and an inability to think critically, which I believe is partly why we find ourselves here. At least if a politician calls for help, the police won't take hours to get to them. They'll get medical treatment pretty sharp. It's not that that's any consolation, but they're in charge of keeping law and order in this country, and they've failed. Whilst I'm not blaming them for the rogue actions of crazy individuals, it doesn't help that they've collectively done such a bad job policing our borders. Rishi Sunak has vowed to deal with the intimidation that many MPs face. But Angela should be more concerned that things will get worse with her soft-touch party, especially when it comes to immigration with Sir Keir Starmer at the helm. I don't blame Mike for standing down. But let's be totally honest, the Tories on the current trajectory are staring annihilation in the face. So if he hadn't agreed to step down and not contest the next general election, he probably wouldn't be in his seat after it in any case. But to be fair to him, his office was firebombed on Christmas Eve. I'd have gone then. So the fact that he stayed on after that is testament to his commitment to the role. But who would want to do the job anyway?